So, let us start uh, from the last topic which I discussed in the last class that is lithography. Today we will discuss on optical lithography techniques. In this diagram you can see three different lithography techniques namely contact printing lithography, proximity printing lithography and projection printing lithography. All these techniques are available in different mass collider machine and mass collider machine you know is used for alignment of different layers on silicon wafer. So, first one is contact lithography technique or contact printing technique. Let us discuss how in a contact printing technique the pattern is transferred from the mask level onto the photoresist coated wafer. The first one here is a contact printing technique lithography technique. So, there a light source is used which is ultraviolet light and whose wavelength varies in the range of 300 to 400 nanometer of wavelength and this optical source provides diverging beam of ultraviolet light and those diverging beam of ultraviolet light passed through a optical house which we call an optical system and this optical system comprises of various types of lenses and mirrors so that this diverging beam of ultraviolet light can be made exactly parallel without any aberration or without any other geometrical defects in the optical beam. These collimated beam are incident on the mask and the mask you know the pattern on a glass plate, the pattern which we want to form on resist coated wafer that is earlier made on glass, glass plate or chrome plate, emulsion coated glass plate or chrome plate that is called mask. That means there you will find lot of space transparent and opaque spaces, lot of transparent spaces and opaque spaces de depending on the layout geometry. So, this mask is, is brought just under the photoresist coated wafer. So, the black region here is the photoresist film and below that is the silicon wafer. So, the silicon wafer before bringing to a mask aligner machine is coated with photoresist film either positive or negative photoresist film and this is pre-baked and after pre-baking then we can put this wafer on the chuck or XY stage wafer holding chuck or XY stage in the mask aligner machine. And there the wafer, photoresist coated wafer is again held by vacuum suction and the wafer is put on a chuck which can move in x direction, y direction and which can rotate theta in ang angular direction also. That means all sort of movements are possible on this wafer holding chuck that is a fine xy stage uh, assembly there x, y, z and theta all possible movements are possible. And now uh, after uh, putting this photoresist coated wafer 
then mask holder brought on top of it. Mask holder is again a rectangular block where you can held the mask using again vacuum suction and when this mask plate is brought just over the photoresist coated wafer, a small gap is maintained and that small gap is required for free movement of the wafer below the glass plate which is mask. So now initially the mask plate and the photoresist coated wafer we maintain a gap and that gap is of the order of 10 to 25 micron. Now what we do we move the wafer either x, y, z or angle theta so that it directly aligned with the mask level. For example, if we want to open a, a, a emitter windows, then we use emitter mask here and below on wafer already base pattern has been done, base diffusion has been completed and now the emitter window must be inside the base window, well inside the base window. So accordingly we can move the silicon wafer so that it will it will just uh, align with the uh, uh, base window and for that some alignment mark is also used in all mask level and wafer level. Those alignment marks helps us to align the different mask levels so that it will not be misaligned with the previous one. Okay. So now when the alignment is satisfactory, then what we do, the we expose. The next step is expose exposure of the photoresist film using the ultraviolet light. So, and exposure time, uh, we have to decide by uh, standardization. So that already been done, and when. Uh, the satisfactory alignment is achieved, then we expose the wafer and in this collimated beam there is a shutter arrangement is there and if we press a switch the shutter will be open, open and this parallel beam of UV light will be exposed by the uh, on the wafer and after a certain time automatically the shutter will close this path. Okay. So a timer is also there. and you can set the timer beforehand so that we can expose at our desired time. Now during exposure, the mask plate and photoresist coated film will be in close contact with certain pressure. So that is why this optical lithography technique is known as contact lithography. During exposure, the mask plate and photoresist coated wafer are in close contact with a certain pressure and that pressure is in the range of uh, 40 to 150 torr in that range. But one thing we have to remember that if we want to move either mask plate or the silicon wafer then we have to allow a gap otherwise what will happen? Always there is tendency to put some scratch on the wafer as well as on the mask plate. And one problem of this contact lithography is that if there is any dust particle either on the mask plate or on the photoresist film, then during exposure and in the contact mode, if I move it, so the dust particle will put some scratch, will make some scratch on mask plate as well as, a, as the photoresist coated wafer. As a result of which in a contact lithography technique we have seen the life of the mask is limited because after several use so you cannot, you cannot avoid scratches. Not only that 
during the exposure. Since both are in close contact and with certain pressure, then sometimes some of the photoresist particles will stick on the mask plate. And since it is exposed, so reaction will take place with the UV light and photoresist molecules, so which are very difficult to remove from the glass plate glass plate means mask plate here. So, if the photoresist particle sticks on the mask plate that will act as an opaque region. So, that will prevent UV transmission. So, accordingly mask will be defective after some use we cannot after uh, several times of use maybe say uh, 20 times or 15 times we cannot use those masks again. So, mask will be damaged because of that close contact mode we are exposing. Clear? So, next technique is proximity technique. In the proximity technique, all the systems are same as contact technique except that the mask plate and photoresist coated wafer are separated by a small gap even during the exposure mode. During alignment mode, obviously the gap should be maintained because we are moving the wafer in different direction for getting good alignment with the mask. Even when alignment is satisfactory, then we go for exposure mode. And in the exposure mode also the gap is maintained. That means the mask plate is in close proximity with the photoresist coated wafer during exposure mode, during exposure time. That is why this lithography technique is known as proximity printing technique. All other parts in the light source the optical systems, optical house and all these arrangements are same as contact. This is the only difference. So, automatically in proximity printing, the damage of mask can be prevented to some extent, is not it? But you cannot assure that there should not be any damage. The reason is that the gap here is of the order of as I told you 10 to 25 micron. In between, if a dust particle more than 25 micron, then that particular particle will make scratch or pinholes, is not it? So, that means in lithography room, normally the dust particles are very low because that is class 10 condition, ultra clean room. So, there the chances of damaging the pattern or mass damage normally is low. But one problem here, since during exposure you are maintaining a gap, that means here gap means a, a an, an air film will be there. So, because of that, so when the parallel beams of ultraviolet light passes through the mass plate, then a diffraction will occur, because we know is a, is just like you have seen a grating where number of transparent on opaque spaces are there and certain gap, is not it? So, there if it is exposed, say when that will come out of the grating, so there is a diffraction phenomenon, bending of the beams from the sharp edges, okay, that will produce diffraction. And because of the diffraction, a distortion in the intensity, a distortion in the image is expected. So, because of that we cannot get high resolution in case of proximity printing alignment. Okay. But you can prevent mass damage to some extent in this particular technique. So, third one is a projection alignment technique and in the projection alignment technique is totally different from 
contact and proximity printing technique. And here the optical source which here we use the ultraviolet source and that ultraviolet source initially will be diverging nature and then when it passes to the optical system, again this optical system contains lot of many lenses, different types of concave, convex, plano concave, plano convex, all certain mirrors. So, lens arrangements are there and when the beam, UV ultraviolet light beam comes out of this optical system, they are again focused to a point. They are again focused to a point. In earlier case, it was collimated beam, but here the after optical system, the ultraviolet light again form a focused point. So, that point passes to the mask and here you can see there is a lot of gap between the mask plate and the photoist coated wafer. Actually, what is done in this particular technique is that the projection of the mask image is brought on the photoist coated film. Projection of the mask pattern, what are there in mask that is brought on this resist coated wafer. So, for that you have to use again a lens system here, optical system which contains many lenses. So, now as you can see here that the ultraviolet light is made a point, is focused and a point, the whole mask plate will not be exposed in a, at a certain instant. So, since it is a small diameter point, it will expose a small region. So, that is why this point is scanned in x and y direction and as it scans, so that particular region will be, will also scan on the photoist coated wafer. So, photoist will be exposed over a certain region and during the x and y direction scanning ultimately all the patterns, whole pattern is, is exposed here. So, here one advantage is that the since the mask and the wafer, photoist coated wafer are wide apart. So, there is no question of mask damage. Mask damage can be prevented totally. And the second point, since you can move this, uh, this, uh, uh, this spot, means ultraviolet light spot and you can form the ultraviolet light spot minimum diameter and small region you are exposing. So, here the chances of fine line resolution is more. Resolution capability of projection printing is higher than the, uh, the proximity printing. But as you find here, the lens or optical system is highly complicated compared to the contact and proximity printing. So, this particular scheme is expensive and complicated. And at the same time, you can see since one spot is scanned over the entire wafer, ex, uh, it will take longer time to expose the full wafer compared to the contact and proximity. In contact and proximity alignment process there, if you expose a switch if you want, instantly it will be exposed over the entire wafer, but here it is not. So, that is why it takes longer time and automatically throughput will be less and so it will be expensive. So, that is the, the difference of the projection system compared to contact and proximity system. All the three techniques, contact, proximity and projection lithography technique has got certain merits and demerits. So, now let us now discuss or compare the specific features 
of the three lithography techniques. Okay. First, let us point out the contact printing lithography. What are the specific features? So here, resist coated silicon wafer is brought into physical contact with the glass photomer. That is why it is contact, is brought into physical contact with the glass photomer. For alignment, mask and wafer are separated by 25 micron, otherwise you will find lot of scratches. In the alignment mode, a gap is marked. This particular technique operate in the Fresnel diffraction pattern and this is the Fresnel diffraction pattern is obtained when G is less than D, where G is the gap between the mask plate and the wafer and D is the distance from the mask, distance of the mask plate from the from the optical system, lens system, okay. So that is D. So when G is less than capital D, then we obtain Fresnel diffraction pattern. In this particular technique, high resolution is possible and resolution in this case is given by W is equal to lambda S under root, where S is the photoresist thickness and lambda is exposure wavelength. For ultraviolet light of wavelength 400 nanometer and for 1 micron thick photoresist, this resolution is found to be less than 1 micron. Roughly the resolution is under root lambda into S. That means you see here, if lambda is less, then resolution will be good. Resolution also will be less. That means minimum feature you can resolve. Okay. So that is why you know, if you decrease the wavelength of the ultraviolet light from 400 nanometer to say 200 nanometer, so high resolution is possible. That means minimum feature you can resolve is, is small dimension, smaller dimension compared to the earlier. Contact pressure during exposure is about 40 to 150 torr. Not only they are in close contact, but contact pressure is nearly 40 to 150 torr. But here the problem is a dart, that is dust particle. It damages the mask surface and produces defects in silicon wafer, as I discussed few minutes back. This is the only problem in contact printing lithograph. Since it damages the mask, the life of the mask is poor. Okay. Now coming to the next printing technique that is proximity printing lithography. In case of proximity printing lithography, the optical systems are same as the contact printing lithography, but a small gap of 10 to 25 micron is maintained between the wafer and mask during exposure. That is the only difference as I told. This gap minimizes mask damage, but you cannot ensure that it completely prevent or eliminate mask damage. Because if the dust particle is more than the gap, then surely it will damage. Okay. Op it operates in the Fresnel diffraction pattern 
So, a resolution is proportional to lambda g under root. Resolution is proportional to under root lambda g. Again, lambda is the wavelength of radiation. That means, exposure wavelength and g is gap between mask and wafer. g is the gap between mask and wafer. Here, it varies from 10 to 25 micron and lambda is the wavelength of the ultraviolet light. Since g is more here compared to the contact printing lithography, automatically resolution here is poor compared to contact printing lithography. The resolution here is reduced and about 2 to 4 micron resolution is possible, where in contact printing lithography, you can expect resolution less than 1 micron. Okay. So, next I am coming to the third technique that is projection printing lithography. In projection printing lithography, an image of the pattern on the mask is projected onto the resist coated wafer, which is many centimeters away. We can, I hope you remember that schematic diagram of projection. It avoids mask damage entirely. because there is a large gap between the mask and resist coated wafer. It operates in the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern, not final, because here L is large compared to D. D is the distance between the optical source and the mask plate and L is the here distance between the mask plate and the waveform. To achieve a higher resolution, only a small portion of the mask is imaged in case of projection printing lithography. For defect free lens system, the resolution limit is determined by Rayleigh limit and here resolution is given by 0.6 lambda divided by n a and n a is numerical aperture of the lens system. Depth of focus is given by plus minus 0.8 lambda divided by n a square. In all the three cases you can see this resolution is proportional to lambda in all the three cases you can see. That means, in a lithography process, if you use lower values of lambda, you can expect higher resolution. So, if you use instead of the ultraviolet light, if you use the X-rays, which has still lower wavelength, then you can expect a very good resolution and in fact extra lithography exists and in some cases extra lithography is also used in VLSI technology and I will discuss extra lithography also in this particular lithography section. Okay. And here the resolution limit is nearly 0.5 micron. So, now if you compare the resolution limit, so in contact printing it is less than 1 micron, in, in the proximity printing it is 2 to 3 micron and here it is nearly 0.5 micron. So, so far as resolution is concerned, projection printing lithography is good, but obviously it has got some other problem. So, that is as I told you, it takes longer time and throughput is very, very low. Now, other than those three techniques, there is another technique that is known as direct step on wafer or DSW. 
in this particular technique of pattern transfer, we do not require any mask. Then how can we do the lithography? So directly, yeah, direct transfer from the mask layout directly the data is transferred on the photoreleased coated wafer. Data means here the mask data will will uh, guide the optical beam and accordingly the optical beam will expose the photoreleased. Depending on the mask data, the beam will change, beam will move, beam will scan on the wafer. That means you may not require any, any uh, uh, mask plate. And here in a direct step on wafer, one uh, advantage is that since you do not need any reticle, what uh, normally is done initially for making the mask from the layout data, we make a reticle and the reticle is basically a single chip. And that reticle is again repeated on another mask plate in x direction or y direction so that you can make an array of chips. Initially only one chip mask is made from the layout that is known as a reticle. In the reticle there is only single chip not multiple chips. And using the step and repeat camera and using some again reduction the reticle is duplicated on actual mask plate in different array that array may be 1000 by 1000 maybe 100 by 100 depending on the mask plate size and that is the final mask plate and we expose during exposure all the the 1000 by 1000 array chips will be exposed there one problem is that if there is a defect in a reticle then that defect will be will be will be spreading when you make this step and repeat mask, any defect on the reticle that will repeat in your step and repeat process. So all the chips will be damaged. But here in direct step on wafer, if you find a single reticle, single exposed, if I find that some problem is there, if it is noticed, then there is a chance of correction of that particular data and so that next chip will be okay. So that is one of the advantage. But here since you cannot expose all array at a same time, so you have to use lot of time, longer time is necessary here, is not it? Direct step or wafer means at the same time you are not going to expose the entire wafer, rather the chip by chip you are going to expose in a small region, then the next region, then adjacent region like that. So in this way you have to allow lot of time for exposure upon wafer. And this particular technique commercially is, uh, commercially is not viable because it takes a longer time so throughput will be extremely low. So what is done direct step on wafer technique is, is normally used for making the photo mask, master mask, is not it? So let us see what are its specific features. The pattern is stored as information in a computer and then directly transferred onto the wafer in direct step on wafer technique. DSW is a mask less process and is used in projection printing where the pattern of a single chip can be directly imaged onto a wafer perhaps with a suitable reduction ratio. Next, length system is such that the image can be stepped to the next location and so on. The need for reticle generation and step and repeat are completely avoided in this particular technique. Okay.
So you don't have to make any reticle and step and repeat is not required at all. If you directly you can write on the photorealist coated wafer. Next, the practice often is to partition the OFR into segments containing several chips and then image tape in each partition. The whole OFR you are making, you are, you, you, you are making certain segments by partition. That is also possible. Instead of a single chip, you make several partitions. Each partition you expose at certain time, and then you go for the next partition, and then expose that. The registration and alignment mark is made in each partition, which improves layer-to-layer -layer registration significantly. each partition you are going to use one alignment mark. So, the alignment of the complete whole OFR with the mask will be extremely good, alignment and registration. Advantage in OFR stepping is the risk factor. Defect in reticle may spoil the number of chips in step and repeat which is unlike in DSW, just now I mentioned. Okay. But one problem here is the throughput is extremely low throughput is less, throughput is the number of wafers exposed per hour. So, that is why this particular technique is not commercially viable. Okay. So, these are the, the comparative, comparative uh, behavior or you can say the performance of three different techniques, its advantages and disadvantages with respect to the performance with resolution, with respect to the problems, with respect to commercial viability, etc., etc. So, out of the four techniques we found the most simple one is the contact printing and their resolution will be extremely good without any diffraction error. So, that is why the contact printing is, is very popular and it is used widely in different laboratories. But in some cases, the projection printing is also used for longer life of the mask and there you have to have certain arrangement so that the optical geometrical effects should be minimized, optical problems will be minimized like the diffraction etcetera. What happened in diffraction? In diffraction then if you see these below the grating, if you see the pattern you find the intensity modulation because the fringe pattern means where some cases intensity is very high, some cases intensity is poor. So, because of this intensity modulation, what will happen? The reaction of the photorealist with the ultraviolet light will not be uniform over the entire region. So, there comes the problem. So, the diffraction effect has to be minimized and that diffraction is again proportional to the wavelength. It depends on the wavelength of light and there are several other parameters. And on the above, in a mask aligner system, the lenses used are very good quality. It must be aberration free. 
and another point you have to again look into that uh, the when you are aligning the wafer and the mast should be exactly parallel to each other that means if there is a there is a wedge in the wafer and the mast so they the con then the contact in the contact mode the contact between the wafer and the mast will not be uniform over the entire so then in some region it will be in good contact some region there is a small gap and the small gap means there is a problem of optical diffraction so that's why the wafer uh, the holder is is a, 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 a nitrogen a nitrogen flow is there so that uh, the whole chuck can be can be floated and during the contact mode it floats and it is in pressure with the mass plate in uniform uniform pressure over the entire surface so because of all these aspects a mass liner machine is extremely expensive is highly expensive and other point is also there what is that that is the the micro movement micro movement means x y z and theta that movement should be very accurate so that you can exactly align both the mass plate and the uh, photoscoded wafer properly okay so these are the uh, different points and before you expose that you have to see that the lamp of the system is on for a for certain time just all alignment is done and then you switch on the lamp that means the lamp will not be in its full intensity the ultraviolet lamp normally used is mercury xenon lamp etc and those lamp uh, it takes some time to give the full intensity okay and again this intensity of the lamp has to be ensured time to time because you have fixed your exposure time and exposure time is fixed with certain intensity and with aging the intensity may deteriorate so in that case time to time we have to uh, measure the the intensity of this uh, beam ultraviolet beam and for that the power supply which is used for uh, making the uv source on so that power supply how much current and voltage is used there so depending on that you can get the illumination or intensity that you have to monitor and if you don't do it then your standard parameter or standard data will be lost then again you have to re standard for different wafer or for uh, uh, different photoresist or after aging effect it may change all these parameters okay so uh, next uh, we will discuss on the uh, the what are the defects defects and problems and those problems are basically the optical problems and that is diffraction interference standing waves proximity effect and there are certain error involved and those things we will discuss in the next uh, lecture okay refraction our next step is mask alignment this is a mask aligning machine our first job is to fix the mask to the mask holder this mask is held by vacuum suction the mask as you see is a glass plate on which a mesh of transparent and opaque patterns have been made the mask plate is now being fixed on the mask holder 
using vacuum suction. The photoresist coated wafer is now placed on the wafer holder. First, pre-alignment is being done. The mask holder is closed on the wafer for alignment. You can see that the mask is extremely close to the wafer. The microscope assembly is a split-filled microscope. The microscope assembly has been pulled. You can see that the scientist is now observing the wafer as well as the mask for correct alignment. The mask pattern is thus being aligned with the wafer. There are four movements to be adjusted X, Y, Z and theta to align the mask and the wafer. Here, he is varying the x, y and the theta parameter. Once the alignment is complete, the microscope assembly is shifted and the wafer is exposed to ultraviolet light. You have just seen the ultraviolet exposure assembly being positioned. The wafer is now being exposed to ultraviolet light. After exposure, the wafer is now removed from the chuck. The mask holder is being raised and the wafer is now taken out. Our next step is to develop the wafer. After the development stage, the transferred pattern can be seen on the wafer. The wafer is dipped in a developer solution for 20 to 30 seconds. This is followed by a rinse in DI water to remove traces of the developer solution. One can see the patterns on the wafer under a microscope at this stage. The wafer is now dried using a nitrogen jet, jet. Please notice how the patterns emerge or can be seen on the wafer now.
Once it is completely dried, the wafer is subjected to post baking. This stage is essential to harden the photoresist before etching. In this case, we will keep the wafer for 30 minutes inside the oven. Our next step is etching of silicon dioxide using buffer hydrofluoric acid.